What is going on everybody? My name is Michael Levan. Thank you so much for joining me as always. Really do appreciate it. Welcome to week seven. This is the last week in the Do You Want to Be an SRE series. Super excited, a little sad that it's ending, but we are here and we're going to briefly talk about containerization and orchestration. So here on my screen, you see that I have the Docker desktop web page up. And with the Docker desktop, really the way that I want you to think about it is a container is a very small lightweight virtualized environment that allows you to run a specific application or a specific workload and the reason why it's so cool is because you don't need an entire system like you don't need anything a bare metal server you don't need a virtual machine all you need is this containerized solution here it's it's really about it the thing is is that you have this container and it's running this application but like what happens if the container crashes or what happens if you know the application has a bunch of load like user load for example and it isn't performing the way that you're expecting it to well at that point you need to be able to scale it and when you scale it that's where kubernetes comes into play and Kubernetes is really an orchestrator. So like, you know, anything that you can scale an application or scale a system or something like that would ultimately be considered an orchestrator. But in the, the point of Kubernetes here or in the point of Docker and containerization rather, you can scale out these containers and make sure they're highly available, make sure they're scalable, make sure there's some auto healing and self healing and all that stuff with Kubernetes. Now, there are other containerization engines like LXC, for example, which is Linux containers. There is uh, CRIO, the container engine. There's Containerd, that's another container engine. And then even, you know, with orchestrators, there's LXC, which is Linux container orchestration. Um, there's Docker Swarm. There's several other ones out there in terms of container engines and orchestrators, but from an orchestrator perspective, I would say like Kubernetes is probably the victor. And then in terms of mm, Docker isn't the container engine victor, but it is like the, how could I put it? It's, it's the popular choice for learning about containers. When people think about learning about containers, they think they have, that they have to learn Docker. And, you know, a lot of the courses out there and all that stuff, you know, it is Docker based. But once you ultimately understand what containers are which are again just lightweight virtualized environments to run a specific workload or a specific application once you understand that then at that point you pretty much understand all of the different containerization engines out there so with that what I want to do is I'm gonna head over to VS code really quick and I'm going to show you a docker file how you would build a docker image which would ultimately run a docker container and then I'm gonna also show you a little bit of kubernetes so I have this application here. Uh, it's just like a sample web app and I needed to containerize it for a project that I was working on. So what I did was I created a Docker file around it. And this Docker file is very straightforward and this is what it does. Number one, it has a base image, which is Node or JavaScript because this is a JS based app. Next, I create a new directory where the application is gonna sit in the Docker container. Then I copy everything from package.json, that's JavaScript's requirements essentially to be able to run the application. Next, I run npm install to install all of the dependencies, all the packages, the libraries that are needed. I copy the bundle source, and then finally, I expose the application on port 3000, and I run the application using the node command line. So if I go ahead and I just run docker build minus t we'll call it open talk app and i put dot dot just means look at the existing directory and as we can see the docker image is being created now what i can do once this docker image is created i can run a container and that container will run the application so with that let's go ahead and head over to the web browser really quick and i'm going to show you how you can get started with Kubernetes in either Azure or AWS.
So first we can get started with AWS. So I'm in the AWS management console here and if I type in EKS, you see Elastic Kubernetes Service. Now, what is EKS or Azure Kubernetes Service or Google Kubernetes Engine? Well, what it is is it is a Kubernetes service that you can use to ultimately host the servers and all of that in the cloud instead of having to run it on-prem, which I actually do recommend everybody do it to, to some extent. Uh, I think it's fun. I think you learn a ton from it to just, you know, run Kubernetes in a couple of VMs. Uh, nothing crazy, just to kind of learn the process. But not a lot of people are doing that nowadays. And because of that, you have tools like EKS. And then in Azure, if I type in AKS, I have Azure Kubernetes Service. So what's the difference between like EKS and AKS? Nothing, technically, it's just a Kubernetes service that you could run in the cloud, depending on whatever cloud you're on. So with that, that's how you can get started with Docker, with Kubernetes, and the overall understanding of both. Thank you everybody so much for watching this series. We really do appreciate it, and I'll see you again next time.